parallel universes. Imagine a world where you cured to play ranked and absolutely destroyed the enemy with your superior macro, outstanding mechanics, and amazing synergy with your team. Now work up to reality because you went 0-10 and your team surrendered. Defeat. A few days ago, I had a pretty bad day of ranked. You can usually tell how tilted someone is based on how many of these purple A circles you see on the OPGG match history. And I had three of them, which means I was triple pissed. I think what got me angry the most wasn't the fact that I played bad. On the contrary, I felt like I was actually playing pretty well most of the games. I was making what I thought were correct decisions, hitting such skill shots, trying to play off my teammates, and we still lost in the end. But what rubbed me the wrong way was that the one single game I happened to win was a game where I felt like I was completely useless. I was missing hooks left and right, my jungler was framing me, even as soon as my ADC felt awful the entire time. But then we won the game, so what the fuck is going on? I'm sure most of you have experienced something like this before, where you lose games because of your teammates or won games that you had no right to win and got carried in. And while solo queue does come down to a certain level of luck in the end in regards to matchmaking, I just couldn't accept that things could be this out of my control. So after a few days of taking a break from ranked and calming down a bit, I rewatched my VODs and made the most objective analysis I could on everything I could have done better. Today, we'll be looking at the first few minutes of this Diamond 1 Lux support game where I went 6-11-18. Before I share my thoughts, I want you guys to just watch this first fight and write in the comments or just keep a mental note on how you think it could have been played better, then compare it to the analysis afterwards. I'll see you guys in a bit. When this happened in real time, I was kind of mad at my ADC because in my eyes, Kaiser played this fight in one of the worst ways I could ever imagine it could be played. The fight starts with Jin and Zerath weighing in the bush to try to get early minion prior. Kaiser decided to use her Q onto the enemy minion wave which means we can only damage Zerath with auto attacks, but I still saw a good opportunity from this spot so I pushed to go aggressive. Zerath walks up and lands a nice W, but that leads to him being in a very vulnerable position in front of a minion wave after I land my Q. Now at this point, I thought that it was a free kill from my general experience of playing this kind of matchup for years. Kaisa just has to walk forwards and focus his Zerath with me, and since Jin has to reload after his 4th shot, he's essentially useless for at least an extra auto attack worth of time, and that combined with the fact that Zerath's W is on a longer cooldown than my Q, I thought it was a really easy free first blood. I ignite the Zerath so that we can continue hitting him even after he goes in the bush, and Kaisa buries Jin's 4th shot after his Q. While Jin is spending time reloading, once again we just have to focus on Zerath before all their spells come back up, and if we continue exchanging blows, we should still be on the better end of the trade. But as I continue to all the Zerath, like an actual horror movie, I see my Kaisa running not towards the free kill, but actively away from it. Like some dude just shot all 4 of his bullets and is manually shoving the next round to the chamber, and instead of trying to bum rush to do, she gets scared and gives him time to shoot her more, like bruh. You can say that she was running away from the minions, but with how low Zerath was getting and the amount of HP we still had after the trades, it was at the very least an easy stunner spell or two we could have taken. I auto spaced the Jin so that the moment he turns around, I get a cheeky extra auto attack on the Zerath, and at this point, I pull the trigger to go for the kill since my Q is about to come up, and Zerath has normal ways to mitigate damage after using heal. Once again though, I see my Kaisa far removed from the fight and decide to use her only current ability on hitting the minions for some reason. Zerath actually makes a really nice flash to dodge my Q here since he sees the windup animation, but Kaisa once again walks away from the Jin when he uses his entire damage kit for a second time and has to reload. Currently, Zerath uses flash, heal, and W while Jin is reloading from his 4 shot and his Q is slowly coming off cooldown. This was a point where I was basically forced to run away since the amount of damage that came from both sides was way too favored for them since my ADC was non-existent the entire time and only used Q on minions, but for some bizarre reason, I that she finally decides to fight when it's already way too late. I stay as long as I physically can and flash away just as Jin would have killed me, but Kaisa continues to engage but doesn't even try to double down to get her passive burst and starts retreating. The final cherry on top that kept me astronomically over the edge was when Kaisa flashes late with the Jin Q attached to her body, which was 4 HP from getting me killed as well. If you saw the clip before my commentary and came to the same conclusions I did that my ADC made probably every worst possible play imaginable, it makes sense why I was so distraught. Even worse was that later on in the game, there were countless times when the enemy got away with barely any HP, which they would have 100% died from if we managed to have even an extra component of items from these early kills. But instead of being up on golden levels, we were down from the beginning which led to our eventual defeat. Now I watched the first clip over and over again to try to figure something out. 
I used them all two of my brain cells to try to understand not just what I could have done better, but how I could prevent the same kind of thing from happening in the future. It wasn't as simple as, oh, I'll just not trust my teammate next time, or I'll play the specific matchup this other way. I'm sure a lot of us have been told at some point after a bad day of rain that we should do one of the following. Suck it up, your teammates were bad. It's okay, just move on, the next game would be better. Get good, you're bad because you made mistakes too, or something similar. And while these responses are all valid in their own ways, I feel like they avoid the real issue in the end. Blaming a loss on bad teammates leads you down to luck, which you can't really control. Ignoring what happened doesn't help you improve, it just teaches you how to forget and potentially make the same mistake again. And saying that you made a mistake can be very misleading, especially if you try to fix a problem that didn't actually exist, or if you don't currently have the ability to accurately recognize what the problem is. When I went for this very aggressive kill angle, I went in with a certain expectation that my teammate was skilled enough to see the same kill opportunity I did. But let's just say hypothetically that my decisions here were 100% objectively correct, where any challenger ADC in the same situation would easily be able to follow up and secure a kill or two. But now we have to ask ourselves the question, even if the decision itself is 100% correct, is the situation you right to do so? It follows the same logic as when I decide on what the current best macro play is in the game. Like for example, let's say your jungler just got caught out and it's 4v5, and the 5 enemies are heading to Baron while the 4 members of your team have to decide on what to do. If the best textbook play in this situation is to just push out the other lane since winning a 4v5 doesn't seem likely, then from a pure objective standpoint, anyone that doesn't follow this decision would be considered wrong. But now, let's say that even though you know pushing out the lanes is the right play, your three teammates all decide to contest the Baron 4v5 anyways. In this new situation, I would argue that the best play would actually be to just follow your teammates, even if the original plan was technically more correct. This is because even though the odds of your team succeeding in the 4v5 are worse than the 5v5, it is still better than the 3v5 if you let to do your own thing. Obviously situations are more complex, like if you can split push fast or TP or whatever, but this is just a simple example. In other words, the current best play is now somehow better than the old one due to the situation, even though originally it was objectively worse. It's kind of like the Monty Hall problem except for League, but all of this led to me understanding that even though I thought I made the correct decisions, when adding in the variable that is my ADC, it was no longer the right play. I had to learn situational adaptability on a micro level. Let's look at the clip we just watched but with a new point of view. The fight starts with Jin and Zerath waiting in the bush to try to get early minion prior. When Zerath walks up with W, I could have actually just used my Q to focus to Jin, taking into account that my Kai'Sa was close to that target and would have been easier to focus, while Zerath would still be taking some hits from my wave which puts him in an awkward situation where he can try to trade damage with auto attacks while losing HP, or take a few moments to try to get into the bush away from minion aggro. As soon as I saw Kai'Sa walking away, even if her decision to not return damage was wrong, I had to accept the situation for what it is and try to disengage as soon as possible so I'm not in an isolated 2v1. I I've also backed off the moment Zerath healed, since it would take me a few steps to get vision of him in the bush, which gives him time to auto attack me again. There was also a way better angle for my Q, where if I aimed it a little bit higher, it could have hit both Jin and the Zerath even after he flashed, which would have given my Kaiser way more incentive to go for the kill, but I kinda tunnel vision too much, so this was my bad. This is the point of no return, where I was so caught up in my optimal play that I didn't realize how low on damage you were, which actually baits my Kai'Sa into staying long enough to die. If the original goal of the VOD review was to figure out who was right or wrong, then we can decide pretty easily on which side we would argue for. There are parallel universes where my ADC actually followed up on my plays and we managed to get a double kill which leads to us snowballing and winning, but at the end of the day, being right or wrong or winning or losing in rank doesn't actually matter since they don't make you better at the game. It's how you understand the decisions you made that leads to improvement and figuring out that the right plays are sometimes not the best ones. If you made it this far, let me know what you think and if you agree or disagree with anything I said. It's always fun to see different points of view and for people who skipped the end for the summary, TLDR. The best play won't work all the time, but the worst play could work some of the time. Just don't rely on either so much that you forget there are other options.